Well, I'd love to come on here and say that's that for the Champions League this year and it's all over and done with and we don't need to endure any more agony, but um, sadly we've got one more game to play. If there was even a world where forfeit was a consideration, then I'd, I'd probably consider it right about now, but we're going to have to do it one more time. And for the second last time this season, it's time to review a Champions League game for Celtic, which we know the result of. Great. Hello, welcome back. Um, I feel like just keeping this one short and sweet, to be honest, because, I mean, what is there to say? Let's be real. Let's be just real for a second. I don't want to be too downbeat and and and, and overly negative about things. But I mean, I said in the pre uh, the pre match live stream before this game, I'd either come on here immensely happy talking about the glimmer of hope or opportunity to progress, or I'd come on here extremely depressed. And I think you know what side of the fence I'm currently sitting on. Um, the final score, Lazio 2, Celtic 0, we are out of Europe Europe this year, we won't be in the Champions League or the Europa League uh, following the, the winter break, um, it's all over for us, it was a must win for Celtic tonight, and we didn't win, we didn't even draw, we lost, uh, two late goals for Lazio, it sealed all three points for them, it sealed European fate for us, uh, and what was another disappointing Champions League fixture, and it's just the norm now isn't it, there's nothing really new to, to, to add into this, there's nothing unique, I mean the game itself wasn't exactly a spectacle, there's not an awful lot of talking points, some positives, mostly negatives, I mean it just feels like the same story time after time, um, so I, you know, it, it, I come on here thinking to myself, I may as well just keep it short and sweet, we're out and that's that, but I guess we'll try and cover some of it, um, we'll try and talk over some some things. And The biggest thing from tonight's game um, it comes in the form of, of conversation that really kind of expands out from just tonight's game. You know, it isn't as black and white as tonight's result and tonight's fixture. The real problems at Celtic Football Club and the real problems of trying to progress in a European stage, uh, you know, you can talk for hours about what needs to change at Celtic Football Club. Tonight, we went out to try and uh, win, and a must-win Champions League game, with James Forrest starting in the wing, with Yang starting in the wing, with a bench full of B-team players. I mean, Celtic Football Club really are the masters of their own downfall. The lack of ambition at the club um, is holding us back. And it's listen, we can't always use it as an excuse. I understand that there were plenty of of Rangers fans and, and fans of other teams who click on these videos and they'll go, you just give us the same excuses year after year after year. And it's always the same. It's never it's never blame the team, never blame them. It's always blame the board. But if you put yourself in the shoes of Celtic fans, then it's really the only place you can put the blame for the years of failures in, the, in, in European football. Uh, the lack of, of, of real ambition and the lack of trying to reward the fans for their loyalty to the club stands stronger than ever after the most recent AGM, um, after the most recent financial reports. This is a club in a very healthy place and situation to really take great strides and they just refuse to do it because the guys at the top of the club simply don't want to do it. And once again, we're left um, hanging on a, a changing room peg by the underwear. We have been well and truly scanted. Um... And, and it just, you know, it feels numb to an extent, I must say. Um, because, once again, you come on, you just say the same things, year after year. Um, you just feel like a broken record, really. So, yeah, the game itself, I, I guess we should try and cover that to some extent. I mean, let's be real, it wasn't the most entertaining game of football. There's not an awful lot of talking points in the game. I mean, Christ, I wish I turned it off after James Forrest was dubbed young by John Hart. John Hartson called him young James Forrest tonight. I think he was the oldest outfield player in the park, for Celtic anyway. Might have been probably one of the oldest on the park altogether, yet he was dubbed young James Forrest. That should have been the sign there and then to go, right, that's all for tonight. <laughs> um, yeah, listen, it wasn't the greatest game in the world, but for all it means now, I actually thought that Celtic didn't play that bad, and I think a lot of Rodgers' ideas... Um, could have worked, 
you know, I think that if we had more quality in the park, we could have maybe seen more success. But, I mean, what are you going to do when you've got James Forrest who can't take on a man? I mean, this this sums it up, right? Mikey Johnston came on the park tonight and done more in 30 seconds than what James Forrest done in 60 minutes. And, and, and Mikey Johnston shouldn't even be on the park for Celtic. That sums up the whole situation at the club at this moment in time. That sums it up there, that, that sentence. Um, I just don't think we had enough quality to pull off what we wanted to do. I think that Lazio were probably the better of the two teams in the first half, but there wasn't an awful lot in it. Celtic had their chances, Lazio had their chances. A lot of Lazio's chances were actually shots from outside the box that went miles over the bar or miles wide. I thought that Celtic defensively were really good. The only problem for me is I thought that sometimes the full-backs were getting caught awful narrow. Very evident with Johnston on that right-hand side in the first half where I thought he would come very narrow where it would leave someone open behind him. Um, almost like you know, far post, uh, and and that was that was a bit frustrating. But uh, you know, we, it worked. We kept them out, and I thought defensively we actually looked quite good. And in possession, we looked comfortable. Um, we were just trying to be patient and take our time with it. We just didn't have the quality on the areas of the park to really make an effective change in the game by scoring a goal or, or creating a, a big big chance. But in the second half, I actually thought we were really good. Up until we conceded, I thought we were all over Lazio. I thought that we created some good chances. I thought the substitutions were effective, having the two up front. I think that allowed Kyogo um, a, a little bit more in the game. O did bring a, some minor impact onto the team. Johnson, I thought, was actually decent. I think that the subs were right. I think that the style was right. We were making chances. We were really unlucky with a couple of them. We were the better side. Um, so I think a lot of what we tried to do was there, but uh, uh, unfortunately for us, it was just too, it was just too passive in some phases. In, in terms that you know we had to win, we had to score a goal, and we just we didn't take that opportunity, and and, and that was just a bit too passive for me. But once again, you you can't ignore the fact that you you're missing your big players there. You know your Maida inject a lot of pace. That's what we needed pace as well. Maida wasn't there, Palmer wasn't there to create an opportunity, Abada's obviously not there, Hitati's not there, you're really, you know, you see these kind of games where it is a bit of a stalemate and you're looking for these guys and they're just not there and and that makes it a hell of a lot more difficult. So for, for all that it means, considering we lost 2-0, I think there was positives in the performance. I think just like Ange Postecoglou last year, in the course of this group stage, there has been enough in the performances to suggest that you've got a manager there who has the right idea of what he wants to do in Europe to try and get results. And he should be rewarded by by the club signing the right quality of player to try and do that with. Ange was the same last year. How many times did we leave these games? I mean, Ange Postecoglou had a, a Champions League win percentage rate of 0%. I think Brendan Rodgers has got 6% with Celtic. They're very low rates. But against some big teams, some very difficult teams, both managers showed some immense class in, 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 in se certain segments of the game. They just never had the quality to get the job done. And the board never gave them the quality to do that. Rodgers' first spe spell here, Ange when he was here... Now you've got to surely look at the games against Lazio on both occasions, the games against the what the, the one game against Atletico, and in the game against Feyenoord as well, to suggest that you know if Brendan Rodgers is given the right players, there is there is the building blocks there to actually do something in Europe. But will we ever get that? It's just year after year we come back to the same result and the same conclusion to that discussion. So I don't know if we'll ever get that. But yeah, I thought that we'd be done some good stuff, and then the inevitable collapse came. I think the first goal that we can see is actually, it's really unlucky, it takes a deflection, doesn't it? And, and you know, we've done well at keeping Lazio away until then. And of course, Shiro Immobile comes on and, and gets the goal that I think most people in that stadium anyway expected them to get once he was subbed on. Um, and there's just no way back from there. It's just more annoying that, at, you know, five minutes later we go and, and we go and concede another and we, we kind of throw away any chance of salvaging a point from the game. Um, it was just a kind of inevitable Champions League collapse of Celtic. The heads dropped. Maybe we left ourselves too exposed for the second as well and and, and pursuit for our own goal. Um, so, yeah, it was it was done there and then. Um, and certain players, once again, I think tonight in certain parts of the game looked a little bit exposed for the level. Um, yeah, the two goals are just poor to give away. And it's just so frustrating because Lazio are a team who I think are so beatable. They were not great in this group stage. And that's that's what hurts the most, I think, leaving this this group. The fact that we were handed a group where we should have beat Lazio twice. We should have done better against Feyenoord. 
and we should have done and we should have maybe got a win against Atletico at Celtic Park it's if butts and maybes and what's that old saying if ifs and butts were candies and nuts there's no point in dwelling on it it is what it is all these cliche sayings but it is so frustrating because I looked, looked at that Lazio team tonight and I went they're so beatable um, and we just didn't have the players to do that and, and I mean it with all due respect to the guys coming off the bench tonight I really do I don't mean to, 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 to feel like I'm I'm constantly berating the same players at Celtic Football Club, but there is no way, there is no way any team has a hope when the players on the bench are Mikey Johnson and David Turnbull and B team players and, you know, we need a, a serious injection of quality and I'm not saying these guys aren't good players, but they aren't the game changers that you need, they're not going to change a game. Um, and, and a serious injection of quality is needed and a serious look at the board, from the board, sorry, at this team is, is needed. Um, yeah, just another painful one to take, even though it, it overall felt meaningless anyway. I think I'm just going to leave it there for tonight, because we'll probably have to discuss this in, in much more depth tomorrow or on Thursday if we do the podcast, and, and talk about the problems at the club. Um, because, as I said, you could be here for hours talking about that and it's and its own, but tonight's game just, yeah, really... I, I do feel numb to it, because I didn't expect us to win tonight. I, I knew our... our pursuit of European football was over after the Madrid game to be honest there was no way back for us but you know in the fashion that we, we constantly lose these games it's just it's a bit tiresome and, and annoying isn't it so yeah um, let me know your thoughts I suppose in, in the comments below um, like and subscribe uh, and we'll be back at the weekend hopefully with a win because it's a much needed win at Celtic it really is I'll see you all next time